Hi, everyone, and welcome to our virtual cheese pairing class. I am one of Festival Foods Mealtime Mentors and Registered Dietitian, Jenny, and I'm so excited to be joining you in your kitchen from the Festival Foods Test Kitchen. So today we're going through a number of really fun cheese and snack pairings. Um, we worked with the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin to come up with these really great pairings. You've probably heard of like cheese and drink pairings before, whether that's with uh, cheese and beer or wine or liquor but we thought it would be fun to do something that was more family friendly that everyone could partake in. So we're doing cheese and snacks. So we do have um, a bunch of stuff to go through, but I wanna make sure that you all have your PDF of all well, your ingredient list is on one side and then your recipe and all the pairings are on the other. So make sure you have that handy. If you don't, no worries. Um, I will walk through everything with you. The equipment that we're going to be using today um, pretty minimal, but I have a cheese board and some cheese knives set out. And then I have a large bowl, some measuring cups, um, a small saucepan and a baking sheet for the snack mix that we're going to be making. So the last pairing that we're doing is going to be with an everything bagel snack mix. So that's one of our favorite recipes here. It's a really great savory snack. And we're going to get that in the oven right away and see if we can get the timing right to end this pairing class with a freshly baked snack mix. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually get my butter going in a saucepan. I just have three tablespoons of butter and I'm gonna let that melt over like medium heat. And while that is going, I will go ahead and mix together like the snacky components of the snack mix. So pretty simple here. It's like three cups of everything. So three cups of potato sticks. These are a total throwback snack for me. When we came up with this recipe and used potato sticks, I was like, man, I don't think I've had these since, I don't know, middle school. <laughs> so it was fun to see them again. So three cups of potato sticks, three cups of cheddar snack crackers. Oops, or a little more. And then three cups of sourdough pretzel like nibblers. And this recipe is really customizable. So if you don't like any of the ingredients that um, we're using today, feel free to substitute something else. Okay, I'm just gonna give this a quick stir to get everything mixed together. And we'll take a look at our butter. Right. and here it crackling, so slowly melting. Um, this is, like I said, a really great class for the whole family to participate in. And the nice thing is that this recipe is something that kiddos can help make as well. If you have them in your family, um, you can completely eliminate like the stove top portion of this recipe by just melting the butter in the microwave. And that can make it a little safer or just help them with the stove top as well. I'm gonna turn this down a little, the butter's popping at me. Okay. So we're pretty much nice and melted here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of our um, ingredients in for like the coating that we're using in the snack mix. So we have a half cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. So I have a quarter cup measuring cup here. And I did turn off the heat. I'm not sure if y'all noticed that. I don't think I mentioned it. So the heat is off. I'm just stirring in the rest of these ingredients. So half cup of the Parmesan and then three tablespoons of olive oil. and a quarter cup of our Festival Everything Bagel Seasoning. So, oops, this one's not even open yet. Okay. It smells so good. I absolutely love this stuff. I put it on just about everything. 
I'm going to give this a quick stir to combine everything. Looks pretty good. And all we have to do now is pour it over our pretzel mixture. And now I'm just going to gently stir oops, to combine. So I mentioned at the beginning of the class that I picked a really large bowl, and that's because you want room to stir everything together. And I picked our largest bowl and <laughs> still having a hard time not spilling everything. And again, you do want to be gentle just because the potato sticks are a little bit more fragile, but that's okay if they break, no big deal. They're still going to taste really good. I want to get this mixed as much as possible, get that butter seasoning mixture over everything. And we are going to stir this while it's baking. So that will give you a couple more chances to evenly coat everything as well. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead now and get this onto my baking sheet. So I just have um, a baking sheet that I've sprayed with a little bit of cooking spray. I'm gonna spread this out. And I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but the oven is preheated to 350. We want this to bake for about 12-ish minutes um, or until it's really just like done to your desired toastiness bubble. You can really eat this right now, but it's even better when it's toasted. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that into the oven. And while we wait for um, that to bake, I will go ahead and talk a little bit about everything that we're going to be going through today. So, um, like I said, we are working with the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin on this cheese pairing class. And they're a collection of brands and products of Wisconsin cheesemakers from all over the great state of Wisconsin. And when you're shopping, you wanna look for that proudly, um, that proudly Wisconsin cheese badge. So there's like an example of it here. You can see it on the packaging here. Um, that's how you know you're getting the really good stuff. So you'll see that on the packaging of all the cheeses that are within this group. And if you're looking for information, about cheese, the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin have put together a really great resource at wisconsincheese.com. Definitely check that out. It has just information on all the types of cheese that we make in the state. And then lots of information about like different pairings that you can do, recipes. Um, so definitely take a look at that website. And just one more reminder, if um, you are not into any of the snacks that I'm making today, no worries, just pick something else to eat. You really can't go wrong with like a cheese and snack pairing of any kind. All right, so let's jump in to our first pairing. The first cheese we have is a cheddar gruyere from Wood River. Um, they have come up with this really unique cheese. You've probably heard of cheddar and gruyere before, but you might not have seen this combination in particular. So cheddar is famously known for its like bold savory flavor profile. And then Alpine style cheeses like Gruyere tend to be a bit softer and sweeter on the palate. So Wood River has brought together the best of both worlds with their cheese by creating this really unique cheddar Gruyere. So it's like a cheese that has the traditional cheddar texture, but then it's enhanced with the typical sweeter notes of your Gruyere. So I'll go ahead and have you guys open up your packaging, cut off a little bit and give that a taste alone. So you'll see that the texture is definitely more cheddar-like, kind of flaky. Mm, so good. I love like the sweeter notes from the Gruyere in there. And they have a lot of different types of cheddar Gruyere. We are just using the original today. And the pairing that we're going to be doing it with is with kettle corn. So go ahead, cut yourself another little slice of that cheese, grab it, and then grab some kettle corn. Um, we're just using a store-bought kettle corn today and then taste those two together. So it's super good because kettle corn has that similar balance between savory and sweet which makes it a perfect pairing for this combination. 
go ahead, keep trying it. If you have extra cheddar gruyere at the end of this class, I would suggest making some mac and cheese and uh, shredding this cheese into it. While you guys keep tasting, I'm gonna go take a peek at the snack mix and give that a stir. Already smells so good. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that first Wood River Cheddar Gruyere and Kettle Corn pairing. The next one we have is with Widmer Brick Cheese. So you found the Wood River cheese in our deli cheese island. The brick cheese, you had to go to the service case for, the, the deli service case for. You can ask them to slice it however you would like. We just asked for it in like thicker sliced bricks. So you can see this is just one like solid hunk of cheese. So brick cheese is really unique. It is a Wisconsin original from the late 1800s. And it's named after the bricks that cheesemakers use to press the curds. Um, young brick cheese will have like a more mild taste with just a little bit of nuttiness, while more mature brick cheese is more complex and tangy. And some view it as like a tamer version of that famously stinky German Limburger cheese. So go ahead, cut off a slice and give that a try. definitely less stinky than Limburger cheese. I really love the texture because it's softer. And one thing to note is that this brick cheese slices more easily when it's cold. So some cheeses are better when they're like more at room temperature, keep that brick cheese cold. And today we are pairing it with some dill pickle chips. So this pairing works because brick cheese has like a mild meaty savoriness to it that is perfectly balanced by the acidity and salinity of a dill pickle. So we've all had dill pickles before. The potato chip is a really great vehicle for that dill pickle like briny flavor. And the two together, that soft brick cheese and then the crunchy pickle chip are a really, really good combination. So go ahead and grab a little bit of cheese, grab a chip and give that a taste. I could see myself eating that whole entire bag. <laughs> if you have some leftover cheese, I would suggest trying it on a sandwich. Um, some crusty bread from our bakery with some like ham and asparagus and then slices of this brick cheese toasted up would be awesome. All right, so continue to enjoy your brick cheese with your dill pickle chips or your cheddar gruyere with your kettle corn. I'm gonna take another peek at the snack mix and give it a good stir. And if you haven't stirred your snack mix yet, this is probably a good time for you to take a peek at it and see how it's doing. Okay. I had two casualties. I'm gonna take these out before they set off a smoke alarm. <laughs> Starting to come together. This really doesn't take long. And like I said, you just want to bake it until it is at your desired toastiness level. All right, so our final pairing is with a five year aged cheddar. So we have one from Wisconsin Graders Reserve today, but there are a whole bunch of different aged cheddars out there. So just pick whatever your favorite is. And if you can't find a five-year age, you can pick a different year. Go ahead and cut off a slice. You'll see that aged cheddar is different than um, like a young cheddar. It's not melty and ooey gooey like your typical young cheddar. It's definitely flakier in texture. Um, it is lower in moisture and has like a more bold, full flavor. So give that a bite. I loved aged cheddar for like it's kind of um, signature like crystalline cracks in it. I just think it's such a great texture. So today we're pairing it with our everything bagel snack mix. I'll go grab that in just a minute. 
but the flavor profile of this aged cheddar works with the snack mix because the flavor of aged cheddar can be driven by sulfur compounds. So those tend to be like kind of onion and garlicky in flavor. And then the onion and garlic and the everything bagel seasoning that we use today really play on that. So it highlights those garlicky onion flavors. And then the crunchiness from the snack mix is really highlighting like, or it contrasts well with the flaky texture of the aged cheddar. So go ahead, take a peek at your snack mix, see if it's done to your desired toastiness level. And if it is, go ahead and pull it out and you can give it a taste. Just be careful because of course it will be hot. This looks pretty good to me, even though it hasn't been that full 12 minutes. Smells so good. So I'm gonna grab a potato stick and a little hunk of cheddar and give that a taste. Mm. It's so good. And the really great thing about aged cheddar is that it stands up to a lot of different foods just on its own, where you would typically like cook with a younger cheddar because it is melty, ooey gooey. In aged cheddar, you wanna enjoy alone. So if you have extras of this cheese, enjoy it with something sticky sweet, like a jam or a chutney um, or a drizzle of honey. Uh, sweet pickles or pickled beets would also be really good with this or just serve it with your favorite fruits and vegetables or um, with like a really hearty green salad or a warm grain salad. So lots of different options for you there. So those are the three pairings that we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions about what we went through today, um, feel free to reach out to us at askfestivaldietitians.com. And then another big thank you to the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin for working with us today on these great pairings. If you're interested in learning more about cheese pairing, or just cheese information in general, definitely visit um, wisconsincheese.com. And be sure to check out more recipes from the Mealtime Mentors at festfoods.com slash meals. And then follow us on Facebook and Instagram at festfoods to be the first to find out about our upcoming virtual cooking classes. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.